Um, so most of my life, I've been working on laser-based fiber optics uh, in different kinds. This is a 40 gig, 100 gig optical transceiver, and it all uses lasers. Everybody uses lasers for fiber optics. But to be honest, after 30 years, lasers are hard. They have a lot of challenges. They're difficult to make, they're low yield, they're temperature sensitive, you have to align them to the fiber very precisely. You need isolators, you gotta be careful about feedback, they have all kinds of modal issues. Um, so I saw this technology about five years ago and it's a little display, it's a micro LED display and there are two million little LEDs on a silicon chip. And I was blown away by the ability to put millions of simple devices like LEDs on a silicon chip where you fundamentally want to generate and receive the data. The problem with LEDs, of course, compared to lasers, is that LEDs can't modulate very fast. So what we did at Avicenna is we developed the technology to take these kinds of displays and make the LEDs much, much faster. So we've been able to make modulated devices that can go at 10 gigabits, 14 gigabits per second per LED. Um, this is the chip that we showed at the conference, at the optical fiber conference earlier this year, and I think it um, demonstrates our technology quite well. It's a 16 nanometer process chip, I think it's running right over here, and on it are a whole bunch of LEDs. Right now they're just printing out Avicenna, but each LED can be modulated uh, at, uh, in this particular case, about three or four gigabits per second, but going all the way up to 10 gigabits per second. And modulating a large number of LEDs allows you to move huge amounts of data. And the really nice thing about LEDs is they work great at high temperature. We can align them with uh, inexpensive fibers very easily. Um, you don't have issues with isolators, with feedbacks, and you can get millions of them on a chip, and that solves the bandwidth issue that you have in AI clusters, in memory, in processors. So the vision here at Avicenna is using technologies like optical chiplets that you can package with GPUs or with CPUs. You take an electrical bus, you run a whole bunch of LEDs and flicker them on and off at uh, many gigabits per second, and then you use these parallel arrays of fibers to transmit and receive the data. The advantage compared to lasers in addition to sort of cost and complexity and reliability, um, is the fact that things go in parallel. So you don't have to have SERDES. Ultimately, you can take these LEDs and put them on the GPUs and memories itself. Um, and the disadvantage, frankly, is that LEDs don't go very far. So the numbers we quote are typically about 10 meters. If you need to go 100 meters, use lasers. But if your problem is over a few meters, LEDs are a much better solution than laser diodes. Welcome to the future of networking, where artificial intelligence transforms the way we connect. AI has been bringing value to networking for many years. Recurrent neural networks, RNNs, and other machine learning approaches have helped with network optimization and management. The advent of generative AI and new techniques have upped the game. Imagine a world of autonomous infrastructure where networks are self-configuring, self-optimizing, and self-healing. This is the AI for networking vision that vendors are promising. But how close are we to achieving it? From design and deployment to management and optimization, artificial intelligence is enhancing every aspect of networking. Troubleshooting becomes a breeze and customer support reaches new heights. Are these enhancements living up to the hype? Join us and share your views in our video showcase of top thought leaders. Contribute to our comprehensive report on how artificial intelligence is impacting the management and operations of networking. AIOps.